So when a prospect comes to you for video work, they are communicating one thing. They believe you could do something for them that they cannot do for themselves. And with any transaction, there's going to be a discussion about monetary compensation, and that's what this video is going to be about today. There seems to be a disconnect between what they think they're paying for as a client and what you believe you're charging for as a video shooter. And what I mean by that is they have a budget in their mind of what the end product is worth to them, while you have a price in your mind of what the amount of work you're going to do is worth to you. This video is my attempt to shed some light on where the money is going, to help paint a picture of what's going into a project for both client and video shooter. Now, being a video guy, I'm going to be speaking from the perspective of the video shooter, talking about concepts and ideas that should be considered when pricing your video work. However, what I talk about is also what the client is receiving in terms of services rendered. The client is receiving much more than just a digital file. Both clients and video shooters should listen to these concepts and consider them as criteria to assess whether or not pricing makes sense for a project. Because at the end of the day, the goal is to connect and do business with people whose creative values match your own and only then is the project worth it for both of you. All right, let's get into it. Any project is going to require a certain amount of time to complete. There are two segments of time that both the client and video shooter must understand. Shoot time and editing time. Shoot time includes all the time needed for traveling to and from the filming site. It includes the setup time for all the necessary equipment for that particular shoot. And of course, shoot time requires the actual shoot time, when the cameras are rolling and recording and filming what needs to be filmed. In my experience, 99.99% of the time, shots need multiple takes and that adds even more time. And then we have editing time. This includes the time it takes for the editor to load and organize all the footage, obviously compile, cut, and sequence all the footage to tell the story. And then there's all the time it takes to color correct and color grade the video. And if the first draft of the delivered project needs any changes to accommodate the client preferences, then re-edits have to be done and that's even more time. Now, if time was the only variable that determined your compensation, then the simplest pricing model will be to charge per hour because that's how most corporations do it. They hire employees and they give them an hourly rate. So it would make sense for you to charge a minimum rate per hour work. However, charging by the hour is going to be your weakest pricing strategy when it comes to leveraging your time. Think about it. If you want to earn a lot of money, you would have to spend a lot of time on a project. And intentionally doing so just to fill your pockets is not only unethical, but the more time you spend on a project, the longer the client has to wait and the more unaffordable you become, leaving you with fewer repeat clients and fewer prospects. These next two concepts will allow you to charge more for a project independent of how much time you spend on it. Ideally, you'd be spending less time on a project because of this next point, expertise, which allows you to charge for your results. Expertise has two kinds of skill sets, camera skills and editing skills. Camera skills is obviously how well you could use a camera and lenses to get the shots that you want, and editing skills, which is how well you could use your editing software to tell the story with that footage. By expanding and refining your skills, you become more efficient with your time while producing higher quality work. You can get the shots you want faster and you could edit them faster in post. This results in a faster delivery to your client, which gives you leverage to charge more for the less time you put into a project. Because I highly doubt any client would be willing to pay more only to have to wait longer for a project that you're spending more time on, which would be our previous per hour pricing model. More time spent doesn't necessarily mean a better result. Instead, capitalize on your efficiency by getting a project done and over with as fast as possible, with the highest quality possible, and satisfy your client with a quick turnover and awesome product. This leaves you with more money in your pocket, a very satisfied client, and more free time for yourself. The last concept you could use to leverage your pricing is style. Your creative taste is what makes your work different than everyone else's. It's the types of shots you take, the music you pick, the pacing of your edit, and the vibe that your video gives your audience. Different styles will attract different clients. And if a client is coming to you for your style over everyone else's, then that gives you leverage to charge more because now 
you're in demand. Out of all the video shooters out there, they want you. They're no longer shopping for best price. Their preference in a video shooter is specific enough, they're able to point their finger at you and say, I want you. And if no one else could do what you do better than you, then you are valuable. So jack up that price because you are one in a million. But like I said before, both the client and video shooter should use these ideas to assess whether or not pricing makes sense for a project. I hope this helps demystify pricing for video work. Let me know in the comments below. Also check out all the goodies in the description box. Thanks for watching. I'll see you guys next time. Peace.